Revelation. Every morning at its matins service the Orthodox Church proclaims, God is the Lord and has revealed himself unto us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Psalm number 118, verses 26 to 27. The first foundation of Christian doctrine is found in this biblical line. God has revealed himself to us. God has shown himself to his creatures. He has not disclosed his very innermost being, for this innermost essence of God cannot be grasped by creatures. But God has truly shown what men can see and understand of his divine nature and will. The fullness and perfection of God's self-revelation is found in his Son Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of the gradual and partial revelation of God in the Old Testament. Jesus is the one truly, blessed, who comes in the name of the Lord. The first title given to Jesus by the people is that of Rabbi, which literally means teacher. In the English New Testament, the word master also issued in relation to Jesus in the sense of one who teaches, such as a schoolmaster or holder of a master's degree. Jesus's followers are also called disciples, which literally means students or pupils. Jesus came to men first of all as the teacher sent from God. He teaches the will of God and makes God known to men. He reveals fully, as fully as men can grasp, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. The coming of Jesus as teacher is one aspect of his being Christ the Messiah. The word Christ in Greek is the word for the Hebrew Messiah which means the anointed of God. For when the Messiah would come, it was foretold, men would be taught by God, Isaiah chapter 54 verse 13, John chapter 6 verse 45. Jesus comes to men as the divine teacher. He claimed on many occasions that his words were those of God. He spoke as, one having authority, not like the normal Jewish teachers, Matthew chapter 7 verse 29. And he accused those who rejected his teachings as rejecting God himself. He who believes in me, believes not in me but in him who sent me. And he who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as light into the world. For I have not spoken on my own authority. The Father who sent me has himself given me commandment what to speak. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has bidden me, John chapter 12 verses 44 to 50. Jesus taught men not only by his words, but also by his actions, and indeed by his very own person. He referred to himself as the truth, John chapter 14 verse 6, and as the light, John chapter 8 verse 12. He showed himself not merely to be speaking God's words, but to be himself the living word of God in human flesh, the Logos who is eternal and uncreated, but who has become man as Jesus of Nazareth in order to make God known to the world. In the beginning was the Word, Logos, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten Son from the Father. And from his fullness have we all received, grace upon grace. For the law came through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has made him known. Jesus, the divine word of God in human flesh, comes to teach men by his presence, his words and his deeds. His disciples are sent into the world to proclaim him and his gospel, which means literally the glad tidings, or the good news, of the kingdom of God. Those whom Jesus sends are called the apostles, which means literally, those who are sent. The apostles are directly inspired by God's Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, John chapter 15 verse 26, to make disciples of all nations, teaching them what Christ has commanded, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. The early church, we are told, devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine, Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Doctrine as a word simply means teaching or instruction. 
the Apostles' doctrine is the doctrine of Jesus and becomes the doctrine of the Christian Church. It is received by the disciples of every age and generation as the very doctrine of God. It is proclaimed everywhere and always as the doctrine of eternal life through which all men and the whole world are enlightened and saved. At this point it must be mentioned that although God's self-revelation in history through the chosen people of Israel, the revelation which culminates in the coming of Christ the Messiah, is of primary importance, it is also the doctrine of the Christian Church that all genuine strivings of men after the truth are fulfilled in Christ. Every genuine insight into the meaning of life finds its perfection in the Christian Gospel. Thus, the Holy Fathers of the Church taught that the yearnings of pagan religions and the wisdom of many philosophers are also capable of serving to prepare men for the doctrines of Jesus and are indeed valid and genuine ways to the one truth of God. It is also important to recognize that there are also things in the Church which not only do not belong to holy tradition, but which are not even to be counted among its positive human traditions. These things which are just sinful and wrong are brought into the life of the Church from the evil world. The Church in its human form, as an earthly institution, is not immune to the sins of its unholy members. These deviations and errors which creep into the life of the Church stand under the judgment and condemnation of the authentic and genuine holy tradition which comes from God. Among the elements which make up the holy tradition of the Church, the Bible holds the first place. Next comes the Church's liturgical life and its prayer, then its dogmatic decisions and the acts of its approved churchly councils, the writings of the Church Fathers, the lives of the saints, the canon laws, and finally the iconographic tradition together with the other inspired forms of creative artistic expression such as music and architecture. All of the elements of holy tradition are organically linked together in real life. None of them stands alone. None may be separated or isolated from the other or from the wholeness of the life of the Church. All come alive in the actual living of the life of the Church in every age and generation, in every time and place. As the Church continues to live by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the holy tradition of the Church will continue to grow and develop. This process will go on until the establishment of the Kingdom of God at the end of the ages. If you enjoyed this talk, consider subscribing to this channel and click on the notification bell, then you will know when new content is added to this playlist. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed day.